<clears throat> All right, time now is 11.14 a.m. in the morning on uh, November 1st. So, uh, yeah, we're on to November. Yay! Uh, we're pretty much officially one and a half way. Uh, not one and a half way. We're officially halfway through my stay here. Um, yeah. Uh, fuck. So, um, I slept from 4.30 to 10.30. 15 ish i woke up naturally without an alarm i set an alarm to 11 but i did not wake up by the alarm because i was hurting in the stomach and the pain woke me up um and um yeah that's pretty much it so i went to the bathroom thank god my dad's not inside uh i i was able to uh I was able to, you know, yeah, I get Michelle sexing me. So today I'm going to work, simple as that, my mom's company, um, and that's pretty much it, that's it. Nothing important is gonna happen. I'm excited for tomorrow because I'm watching Killers of the Flower Moon. I'm gonna buy popcorn, I'm gonna be prepared and shit. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna edit a couple videos, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I need to really start working on video essays, and I really need to start working on the whole USC thing. I activated my email last night, um, and yeah, there are two needle in the haystack Facebook posts, but I'm, I'm only reaching out to one of them, because the other is like a YouTube thing, so I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not gonna, um, because I'm better than that. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, and hopefully interesting things, uh, happen in the next couple of weeks. Maybe, uh, you know, I'll go to China, which is still very scary. I don't think that's a great idea, considering that I've been involved in protests. Um, so I don't know. But then again, there are probably thousands of people tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people involved in protests, they're not going to catch them all, unfortunately. Um, and then uh, maybe meeting Miss Solomon again with Nick, so that's going to be cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll adventure, I'll play Minecraft, I'll draw, I really want to draw. Um, I want to build a good, like, drawing portfolio on my Instagram before I head into USC, which is going to be impossible, given that all my drawings right now are shit, but, um, I'll try my best, and, uh, yeah, hopefully I earn enough money to reach the $20,000 mark, it's going to be just right, it's crazy how I need to take on four part-time jobs in order for that to happen, like, in order for me to, um, be able to reach the twenty thousand dollar mark i did some calculations yesterday that's true um and especially given how the hkta keeps canceling on me or more not hkta but the, the that client um but yeah that's pretty much it all right time now is 10 13 p.m um yeah, so, uh, I'm sick. I, 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 I finally accepted the fact that I'm sick. And, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why. It's a very mild sickness, too. But it started off last, it started yesterday lunch already. I was, like, sneezing a lot. But I thought it was just, like, a random, like, sensitivity thing. But, no, it got way worse. Like, this morning, after I woke up. I felt terrible. I felt tired. My voice felt really low and deep, and I just felt, um, I just sneezed a lot, and I had a lot of, um, running nose, so I got sick. And even so, I went to work, and pretty much nothing happened. It feels like I have fever. I don't think it's here. I think I just feel extremely tired, but it almost feels feverish. Like, I arrived, I was half an hour late. And I arrived and I basically did nothing other than logging videos and also occasionally going through the film 33 videos, which is still fascinating. Like rewatching those videos is like revisiting my traumas 
and in, in a way it's fascinating like oh oh my god like oh my god and there there are so many moments where like i didn't even catch like there's a video where jonathan was like fuck fuck and skylar was telling him something like what's happening <laughs> holy shit so yeah it's it's crazy um i'm really excited about the doc i think um if anything uh the, this documentary is uh my greatest achievement in uh rounds one two three i think this is like um the the thing you know the thing that i um that i can you know bring home and and, and be proud of but yeah so originally i'm supposed to stay at the place stay at the the place stay at work until like 9 p.m but um yeah i just can't do it even if i can because i'm sniffing my nose like this all the time i don't want to do that in front of kids it's just like it's, it's just weird like what if i get the kids sick even if i don't get the kids sick they will be worried that i will get them sick so not a good idea so i left early so i left at 6 p.m and i and my mom we left together and went to causeway bay and we um bought the new phone so and voila we went to uh 1010 which is a phone store and um they are selling the samsung s23 plus for like ten thousand dollars which is fucking insane and with the discount it's like eight thousand eight hundred which is still whack so we left and then we went to times square we went to a broadway central electronic store and uh we bought a phone there and we spent like half an hour or at least 20 minutes with this samsung guy or this phone guy um but i think it's samsung guy because it's a samsung counter and and he basically like you know talked about s23 plus and i've made my decision it's s23 plus and the price dropped from 8800 8, to 8000 and uh plus discount and everything because my um because my mom decided to I don't know, use up some other discount stuff and bought some other stuff with it. A whole combo wombo. So the price of the phone itself is now like 7000 So it is a total bargain. And it also dropped. Like apparently this morning it was like 8100 but now it's like 8000 So it's just $100 less. So, so yeah, you know. So I got the phone. I got the green one. It works. And... It may seem like a very irrational, unnecessary decision, but for some reason, it just felt like it felt like it worked. I didn't even plan to buy the phone today, but my mom just randomly went up to me during work saying, hey, let's just buy the phone today. I'll buy the phone. You go to work. I buy the phone for you. And it's like, no, I'm going to come along. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, it's not irrational at all because the phone I'm using right now, A, it's running out of storage space big time. B, it's, you know shuts down by itself all the time and it's still not at a very bad state right now but very soon it will so thank god i'm buying a new phone because there's no way in hell am i doing that in the usa so i came back home and i had crab again my mom loves crabs and uh yeah um i'm really i really need to go to bed early 3 30 at the latest hopefully um hopefully have a big ass sleep and then tomorrow hopefully wake up naturally and then i will go to watch killers of flower moon hopefully i'm not sick by then um yeah um yeah um i'm gonna say that if i was in la right now i would suck like right now in hong kong me having the sniffles me feeling you know like i got cold it's fine it's just small small business it's just business as usual you know i keep using my laptop i keep going out fine but in la it's it's gonna feel like a, another challenge another hurdle another battle yeah, i'm gonna be circling around my room feeling cold feeling tired and having no purpose in life and i'm gonna fall into a deep pit of depression or something and um I'm just so blessed. Like, imagine if I'm in LA right now and it's cold and the entire apartment is empty and I go out and I cook and I just eat the blandest, most disgusting pork chop with rice, with like nothing, with air. And I just feel terrible. Like that's gonna happen. But in here, it's so much more colorful and 
real and I just love it so much more here. Again, it's probably because of my lifestyle and also I don't know how to live by myself. Like I can live by myself, but I can never live by myself as if I'm in Hong Kong. Like living by myself in LA, um, I, I just, I know how to, but I don't know how to live as if I'm in Hong Kong, as if nothing has changed. But uh, yeah, okay, speaking of apartments, uh, Ashley um, DM'd me earlier because I posted a selfie of myself. I took a selfie of myself with a stone lion and usually I don't post selfies because they're disgusting and I hate my own face. But once in a while I feel happy and I feel good and that's last night. I didn't feel extremely happy, but, it, but I felt confident enough to post a selfie with a fucking stone lion and I posted it on close friends so that the rest of the world wouldn't see it. Um, but I've added Ashley because why not? Ashley saw it and Ashley DM me, you shaved it, question mark, all caps. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I jokingly said, I'm about to change my whole personality before I come back. And he's like, she's like, yeah, you should, which is a bit of a sideburn. Like, oh damn. So my personality before is like sucky, right? Um, so I just so I simply replied, lol damn, but yeah, so yeah, it's cool. Um, I don't know. Um, I also asked um, my mom's colleague to act in my short film because my mom told me that he can, but he said he can't because he's never acted. Despite the fact that one of the most well-made, I'd say the second most well-made short film I've ever made is led by a, a person who's never acted before so you know that's no issue actually um but yeah um still keep looking i guess and uh yeah i just i don't know i, I still keep thinking about relationships especially given that i just finished watching Shock tensei and it's so much about like having relationships and relationship stories and like high school romance which i'm just completely high school is already long gone it's long dead i can't i'm already past the stage of anger like fuck secondary school is over and i haven't dated anyone like I, i'm not even angry at this point because it's so long ago it's just like there's nothing i could have done and then now i'm in college now i have the same like oh fuck college and i haven't dated anyone um I really wish, I wish I'm asexual, I really do, I wish I'm asexual, aromantic, so that I wouldn't have worries like this, like I would rather that be the case. Um, but uh, truth be told, you know, I really shouldn't care about getting into a relationship, it's only going to make myself feel worse and worse. Um, I feel like if I go to USC, I feel like if I work harder, you know, to work on my fashion sense, work out, look better, be more, con be more confident and uh, have a more art artsy repertoire. I feel like it's not going to be too extremely difficult. Um, A, because we're, we all are more mature human beings now. B, Americans are, or I, I wouldn't date an American anyways, fuck them, um, I don't know, but, but yeah, I just, uh, I just wish I made romantic is all, everything would be fine and simple, you know, everything would be fine, <laughs> <coughs> all right, so, mango mooncake, this is not really real mooncake, but, uh, it still sort of counts, I guess. This might as well be the last mooncake I'll ever eat before I return, so, uh... <sighs> yep. Alright, um... Time now is 12.44 afternoon on um, November 2nd. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah, I slept from 4.15 to 12.30. I actually woke up by an alarm. I could have slept longer. Um, and, um, yeah, I still feel kind of sick. I still feel, um, my nose is stuffy. And, um, I don't really feel that great. Hopefully, it's an improvement from yesterday. I'm glad I'm able to sleep that much. Um, but, yeah. I still feel kind of stuffed. Um, so today, it's simple. I'm going to watch Killers of the Flower Moon. That's that's pretty much today. Um, and, um, yeah, that's it. So, hopefully I'm less sick in the next two hours. Um, but I really want to watch it today, because if I don't watch it today, then I pretty much can't do it any anytime, any time, any when else so uh so uh yeah that's that um i had a few dreams but i basically forgot them all kiara asked how i'm doing so randomly out of nowhere last night at 3 a.m so that's that um and yeah yay woohoo I have nothing to talk about. Um, I'm gonna also um, probably work on some personal stuff. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna write scripts. I'm gonna I'm gonna read manga. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit some vlogs, and uh, it's going to be nice. I guess it's going to be nice. I'm going to send USC a couple emails about financial aid, about what classes to register, and, uh, yeah, that's it. So, I haven't really completed my USC orientation, uh, submission, like, registration, because, uh, apparently I can add two guests. So, I went to Instagram, and I made an Instagram story saying, hey, who's interested? And, of course, Thomas immediately said, yes, I'm interested, and I already knew that Thomas will. Um, and aside from that, there's, um, there's one Zoom meeting on December 1st, 2.30 p.m. In their time, so in my time, it'll be 6.30 a.m., which is fucking stupid. I'm not going to wake up at 6.30 a.m., uh, but it's the online orientation. January 4th is the on-campus orientation, um, and, um, and, um, you know, and then there's another registration Zoom meeting on December 14th. Um, that one I think I can attend because it's 9.30 a.m. A.K.A. 12.30 at midnight. So I can handle that one. But yeah, overall, that's that. And not much else. Not much else for today. Wednesday night in her home. All right, time now is nine fifty two PM. Um Yeah, so uh I I went to watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Um great movie i was late for a couple minutes but uh, i watched uh, I, I didn't miss anything um it was still playing like a like a trailer or something when i went in watched the whole thing and it was a fucking masterpiece i moved but also while watching it i begin to feel more and more uncomfortable my head feels very heavy i feel very tired um, my eyes feel very hot my hands and legs feel cold 
And so that's when I started to realize, oh my god, I have a fever. So after the movie, I went back home and, uh, man, do I have the fever. The fever is at, it wor at, at its worst. I went to the bathroom to take a shower and then I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go back to sleep. I, I need some rest. So I got into my pajamas and everything and I went back to bed and, um, I didn't fall asleep, but it was a very good rest. I just laid on my bed and then I left and then I had dinner and here I am. Uh, my mom gave me this amazing made in China thermometer that looks like it's it came straight out of the 1980s and it didn't fucking work. It kept glitching and I put it on my tongue for like 10 minutes and it, it's at 37 point something degrees but I barely, I don't think it's any accurate at all um, because the temperature keeps changing. Uh, but I do think I have some form of fever. I think my fever got a little well right now because I, I took medicine. But um, yeah, goddamn, it's it's at it's at its worst. Um, yeah, um, hopefully it gets better tomorrow so that I can tutor again. If not, I would be pretty mad. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today. Um, I got nothing else to do. Um, I want to draw. I want to keep writing scripts. Um, I also um, spoke to Ariel a little bit, and by that I mean like just a tiny bit. I texted Ariel in the morning asking her, how are you doing? Because I want to ask her to be a producer slash first AD for my short, and she hasn't responded to that yet. But she was like, oh my god, Ina, how are you doing? It's been so long. So that's that, you know. Imagine if Ariel and Benny and Birkin fucking plot my demise with my own short film. That would be hilarious. But I hope that doesn't happen. I would really feel bad for, you know, people who I don't trust to be on my short film. But yeah, I'm still waiting for a response from the rifle thing. Hopefully that gets somewhere and uh, we'll see. We'll definitely see. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I don't have a lot to talk about. And um, yeah, I'm really, really tired. Um, I really don't look forward to anything in life at all at this point. I really want to, I really want to be invested in someone. Like, I, I know that by falling in love with someone, I'm essentially, like, I let my feelings be played. When I fall in love with someone, and I'm genuinely emotionally invested in someone, I am allowing myself to be vulnerable and it's very dangerous you know it's very dangerous um but having someone to be invested in is such a good feeling it's such a good feeling yet at the same time not a very great feeling at all it's very intense And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be difficult. Another thing I found out was, um, you know, I, the thing with me is that I open up a lot. I tell a lot of people about my insecurities and I act weak in front of people. And that way it made me make friends very easily. And I was right, you know, back in form six, when pink, when, um, when pink opened up to me, I realize I should also open up to others, but if I want to go about, you know, charming others, being open and vulnerable is actually not exactly the way, at least not at first. Like, I feel like you need to be confident no matter what you do. Like if I was a girl and I see a guy who is very artsy, who doesn't look that bad, hopefully me, you know, I hate how I look, but hopefully people don't think I look terrible. Um, and then the guy turns out to be a, you know, oh, I'm such a loser, and you know, but I would not, I would be a little turned off, like, oh, this guy is like, sees nothing of himself. I want to be ambitious, I want to be bold, I want to be confident, or at least act confident. So I think that's the new thing I need to pick up on is confidence. I need to walk around as if I got nothing to worry about in life. Like, I look at people like Christian. I can't tell what is his insecurity. For all I know, 
there's n no insecurity. Like he he's not he's not suffering from anything. <laughs> I don't think Christian is going to be in a relationship, but if someone has to choose between me and Christian, it's going to be Christian. Um, or um, let's look at people who, you know, Benny. Benny definitely has insecurities. He hates confrontations, but Benny's also extremely confident. He walks around like he's slipping Jimmy with all the ideas up his sleeves. Whenever he wants to get something, he'll get it. Um, Birkin and Zach have no insecurities. They walk around like they're kings. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, maybe it's a confidence thing. Maybe I just need to be more confident, you know? Had I been more confident, maybe I would have gotten Leslie. But also, no, because, um, because Leslie's just incapable of a set relationship. Um, whereas I am extremely capable of a set relationship. And I would hate for people to have open relationships. Like, they can date anyone else. Like, please don't do that, please. Like, please let me be exclusive to you. So, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts. All right, time now is 1.30 p.m. Um, <clears throat> on November 3rd. Uh, I slept from, like, 4.30. I wish I slept earlier. I didn't. Uh, 4.30 to one twenty, basically. I woke up a couple times, but it was overall a very sweet, full sleep. And, um, <clears throat> I feel a lot better now. Um, I think since last night, I already started feeling better, honestly. Like, after dinner, I already felt better. Maybe, maybe the medicine's working. I don't know, but, um, I feel a lot better now. So, that's pretty good. I had a couple of dreams. One of which involves me going into a music class in my mom's company, in my mom's office. But it was full of people that I know, like my cousins and stuff. And then weird creatures started showing up, like a red bird that's trying to chomp me. Or um, like weird insects. And then finally a gigantic shark went into the room. And without any hesitation, I ran out of the room and left the, the entire building. And um, I came out alive and unscathed and uninjured, and I'm pretty proud that I run away really fast. <laughs> and then um, there's another moment where I was going down the escalator and I saw a girl, and I looked at the girl and she looked at me, and I recognized her and then she recognized me, and then I to asked her, are you the girl who like helped me make the short film Love and Death? And, he, and she's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember you now. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to tutor. I'm going to tutoring in Taiku. I'm going to teach. Um, and that's, that's it. That's it for today. I think I'm not sick anymore. So, yay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm glad I got my Samsung S23 Plus phone now. I think that's amazing. I think I'm gonna do a bit of a transfer, a wee bit of transferring um, um, in December, perhaps. But now I need to start looking into buying laptops. I also really want to buy those Blu-rays and DVDs in Taiku CD Warehouse. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then, um, yeah, um, <clears throat> my voice is still very raspy, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's it for today. Again, I don't have a lot else to say. Ariel last night told me that she's down to help, but she needs to check the dates and times to make sure it's right because she's hella busy. And, uh, that's true. That's true. She is hella busy. Oh, and uh, I have to talk to Tova. Yeah, I have to talk to Tova. Um, I have to talk to the short film guy, the producer guy, because the Through Chance film is shooting again. And um, I mean, it's been shooting, but you know. And um, yeah. Yeah, so um, there's that. 
I'm excited for the Film 33 doc. I really am. Um, and uh, I finally registered for the USC orientation, so... Yeah, and I invited Thomas to go to the Zoom meeting. Um, and... Um, yeah, um, I hope Thomas knows how to record the whole thing while I just sleep. Me, 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 you know, that would be the ideal. Um, and, uh, yeah, I feel like I can go for an adventure on Saturday. I feel like that's possible. So I'm looking forward to that. Maybe a tiny adventure. Um, maybe not somewhere far away like Hampton, but, you know, somewhere tiny, somewhere simple. Uh, maybe Kowloon Walt City again. Kowloon Walt City Redux. That would be amazing. That would be cool. Um, or actually, I want to return to Nan, uh, Nan Lian Gardens because I um I actually haven't entered the Buddhist temple yet. I've been to the garden. The last time I went, uh, the Buddhist temple was already closed. Maybe I'm gonna go for that. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that actually. Yeah. So uh, yeah, voyage. I don't know. All right, time now is nine forty-six. Um, nine forty-seven p.m. Um, my voice sounds extremely raspy right now, so that is amazing. I really love it when that happens. So yeah, nothing important happened today. I'm supposed to go out to tutor today, but once a fucking again for the fourth, fifth time, for the fifth fucking time, they have canceled on me. I texted the client's mom saying, hey, I'm coming later. And then the mom said, oh, he's going to a camp. And that's it. He didn't offer any other explanation. Just he's going to a camp. Okay, fine. Like, they're just making sh excuses now. They're just making shit up now. I wonder what's the next excuse. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna see what, what sort of excuse they're, they're gonna come up with next Tuesday, okay? So anyways, because I have nothing to do for the whole day today, I feel kinda bored. And I feel bad. When I feel bored, when I have nothing to do, I think. When I think, I feel sad. So, I feel sad. I just, um, the truth is, my life is at LA now. All my connections, all the people who support me, all the interesting things are in LA, you know? So, my life here is over. So, I don't have anything here to do, really. Um, and maybe if I stay here for two years and start my job here, maybe, maybe then something interesting will happen. But nothing's gonna, nothing interesting is gonna happen in three months. Let's be honest here. You think, you think I'm gonna meet someone interesting, and stick with them, find a new best friend? You think I'm gonna find a new purpose, a new hobby? You think I'm gonna feel all right? You think I'm gonna improve myself? No, cause this place, for me, is a black hole. I come back here and I feel peaceful, but now I've, I've overstayed. Yeah, this place is great because I have great food and I can sleep and whatever, but yeah, my life is back in LA, unfortunately. So for a good chunk of today, I just feel awful. And also I'm, I'm like, you know how in the last couple of days I've been feeling very sick and I sort of lose track of time. When I'm sick and I'm not motivated to do anything, I allow myself to not do anything. So I just play Minecraft and I just listen to music and I just lose track of time. But now it's sort of like the post sickness clarity, if that's a thing, where suddenly I realize that I've lost track of time and I'm crashing down. Like, I just feel empty now. I really do. Like what, what is there to do other than more work and watching movies, nothing else. I got no one to hang out with. I got nothing. So it's been getting really insanely 
um, bland for me. Um, so I'm like, you know what? Might as well go down and do some exercises, which is kind of crazy. I just got better from a sickness. Um, I think I got better. Um, I feel fine right now. So I just immediately went downstairs and did some push-ups and whatever. So I went back up and I took a shower. And the moment I got out of the shower, I saw that Leia, not the check-in girl, this one, called me twice and Miriam texted me saying that uh, they're uh, here downstairs and ask me if I want to join them. And I just told them, I literally just went downstairs to work out and I just finished the shower. And I have a new rule and that is every time I go out and come back, I need to take a shower. So if I go out, come back, go out, come back, and then go to bed, this means I'll have to take three showers a day. Which is so fucking annoying. Besides, I already have plans. You know, I'm gonna read manga, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna whatever. I'm gonna write a script. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch some anime tonight. So I had dinner, and then I thought to myself, "Oh right, it's been a while since I've hung out with them, and you know I've been complaining that I'm bored and whatever and blah 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 blah. You know what? Let's let me just go down there and just talk to them and just like pour my heart out or whatever. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'll probably go to bed really late again today because. I'm going to watch anime, I'm going to take a shower again, watch some anime, I'm going to draw, I'm going to whatever, 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 but it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Um, and tomorrow I'm going tutoring, which means that I'm not going to have an adventure tomorrow. I'm going to tutor at 5 p.m. Um, so at least the staff's tutoring is working out for me. Um, but yeah, so no adventure, but that's okay. On Sunday, I don't think I'll go adventure as well. On Sunday, I'll still go to work. Maybe I'll watch a movie right after work. I don't know. And then finally, next Tuesday, I th think I'll go adventuring next Tuesday. Because I have nothing to do. Uh, next week should be pretty wild because I'll be going on an adventure. I'll be going to China, which again, not very excited about. Um, and then immediately the day after, I'm probably going to the Palace Museum, which is going to be wild. So, um, yeah, there's that. So I'm going to go downstairs, like, right now. Yeah. I don't even know my damn district. <laughs> it's not this one, is it? <coughs> All right, time now is one forty six PM on November fourth. Uh yeah, wow, fuck. So, um, yeah, I slept from like 5 a.m. till 1.30, but it was a really good sleep. Um, I probably woke up 10 times in the middle, but it's okay. Um, I had a dream where I sort of, it was in the school and I saw someone, like someone returned and it was this very emotional thing because that person was sick um, and he's cured so everyone's crying and everyone's trying to hug him um, yeah that's basically it um, <coughs> um, yeah so today I have nothing to do other than tutoring in Taiwan at 5 p.m., which is cool. Please don't cancel on me. Please don't do that shit. Um, and um, yeah, um, I, I um, I just realized that I have to print past papers, but my mom's not gonna be here 
I didn't speak to my mom at all yesterday because I didn't even see her yesterday other than when she's asleep. Um, but yeah, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I have confirmed a time with Tova to call her on Tuesday night. So that's going to be cool. And then I need to reach out to the producer guy still. The rifle thing still hasn't reached out to me. Don't know why, but yeah, that's basically it. I have nothing else to talk about. I am a blank, empty man. Um, I do want to say that last night I had a thought that sort of helped out. And that is um, one of the reasons why it's difficult for me to fall in love is because I'm just smart. And I know that's really like cocky way to put things but it's true that intelligent people tend to have a more difficult time falling in love and being romantically interested because they tend to um, have very high standards or or just hormonally you know we're just not as um easily romantically swayed you know we're just uh we're just very into ourselves romantically not into ourselves we're just very focused on other things like the way i'm focused on movies you know there are a lot of other people who who are interested in things for sure but nowhere near as i am into movies like i am just a movie fanatic um in every aspect and so people like me uh, usually have a really hard time falling in love with anyone else because because we're just not that we're just not normies is all we're just not normies uh, <laughs> so maybe you know on the on the brighter side of things yeah, I don't fall in love, I don't go around and fucking, I don't, I don't date around and hold hands and whatever, but that's just a sign of me being insanely concentrated in my own, in my own art, you know. Um, oh yeah, and I haven't talked about meeting Leah and Miriam last night for dessert, so I did go out at around 9 50 p.m i went out and i thought i was going to be late i thought the dessert place will close turns out it won't until like 2 a.m so i went there i arrived i called miriam um because i don't know where exactly it is uh miriam's like are do you even live here and i finally found the place wasn't that hard anyways i know it's around that area and i finally saw um Miriam and Leah and we sat down and it's actually been a whole ass month since I've seen either of them but it felt like it's been a week uh, but, but because so little has happened uh, in the last few days that it felt like that um I um yeah so I spoke to yeah I sat down and we ordered stuff both of them ordered like shaved ice Leia ordered uh, Yakult flavored. Uh, Miriam ordered mango and Yakult flavored. Um, and you know, the last two times I've been there, I also ordered shaved ice. So I'm gonna order something else. So I ordered a mango uh, chewy ball ice cream thing. And it's exactly something straight out of Hilo San. But the thing is, it's been a whole year and more since I've stolen food from my own restaurant. And that place is fucking closed. So I, I want to eat it. So I had it and it's great, you know, it's great. It's, um, it's a really good dessert. I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, you know, and we talked and I thought I would have the opportunity to pour my heart out and talk, but, but we just didn't have that much time. Instead, for some reason in front of those two, I just come off very happy and jolly because I told them about my work and my jobs and, um, I told them about how I went to Lang Kwai Fong 
on Halloween with Zara and Small Bits. And they talked about how earlier yesterday they went to this cooking class, but turns out they're late, so all they did was eat other people's cooking. They ate a couple cookies, and that's all they did. Um, and, um, yeah. And then I, I, I talked a little bit about my short films. Leia randomly asked me if I'm making a short film in Hong Kong, and I'm like, yeah, just a bit. And, um, and yeah, um, and then Miriam asked me, do I like talking about social topics like society in my short films? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. And then she's like, maybe about homelessness? And I'm like, yeah, but, you know. And Miriam t told me to, you know, she suggests that I go around Hong Kong to collect inspiration. And maybe go to Sham Shui Po and look at the uh, poor people. Look at uh, uh, homeless people. And I'm like, no. Like, first of all, if I want to look at homeless people, LA is full of them. And Leia's like, oh, but dear, it's different. And also, you know, everyone looks at things differently. And I said, oh, Drifting is a very good movie about homelessness. And they're like, no, but it's from you. And that's true. Now, now it looks like I have shit ideas. So I tell them, okay, I'll tell you my ideas. I like to make movies about suffering. And they're like, well, I feel like... And Miriam's like, well, I think you need more experience on suffering. You need to suffer more in order to, to be able to write about suffering. And I'm like, yeah, but also... Most of my short films are about me, basically. And so I, I raised an example. I told them that lately I've been writing script... And it's a sports thriller. And both of them were like shocked. Like sports thriller. I can't. Leia's like. I can't imagine it. <laughs> I can't imagine it. <laughs> and so I started explaining my story about badminton. And about toxic masculinity. And it sort of impressed them. Because the way I write stories. I, I don't just think. Oh I want to write about um racism and then I write a story about racism like like I'm not straightforward like that you know so I tell them about oh it starts it's about a guy who plays badminton so much that he goes insane and they sort of laugh but then I start explaining like from the start from beginning to end like how the movie's actually gonna go down and they're like oh okay now that's getting interesting and that's exactly what makes me stand out. Again, I hate sounding cocky, but I, um, yeah, like Miriam's writing a Chinese passage about masks, hidden identities, which is cool. You know, I can't write in Chinese for shit. But the thing is that I, I am so much more artsy than that. I don't just pick a topic oh today's topic is going to be mm, it's going to be about uh identity crisis and i write a story about people with split personality like that's dumb that's too direct i i write about something and on the surface it's one thing but in its core it's another thing it's misleading i also go about an artsy way like when i i also told them about my horror film idea for liturgy and it's like oh so there's a doctor and his girlfriend and they have to attend a wedding little did they know they attended the wedding but the girlfriend's family secretly want the boyfriend to cure the girlfriend's cousin who has a mysterious disease and that's the premise and i haven't gone to the core yet but it's interesting it immediately starts some sort of initiates some sort of imagination you know it's, it's the details, it's the technicality, it's the feel. That's where it comes out, you know. I feel like I have a better hold on storytelling, or at least art house, artsy storytelling than most people. Okay, I don't want to sound cocky, but, but I'm proud of my own ideas, okay? <laughs> Alright, time now is uh, 10.28. Um, yeah, nothing happened today. Not, nothing that important anyways. At 4.30 p.m. I left, uh, actually at 4.40 I left, I went to um, 
Chai Wan to do tutoring again and for the third class. And then um, I arrived, I went to Youth Square, I saw her, I saw the client, and I saw the client's mom, and the mom left for the first time. Uh, so it was just me and the girl, and we basically um, did some uh, studying, that's it. Before going, the client's mom whatsapped me saying that she failed her English test again. And it sort of hurt me, because I feel like I'm partially responsible for this. I tried my best to teach her, and she still failed, and I feel really bad. And once again, she said that, you know, oh, it's the passive voice and the um, and the comparatives and superlatives that's messing me up. So it's almost like the, the stuff I taught her is basically in vain. So that's kind of sad, but also that's to be expected because I had to teach her like four days prior to the test. I couldn't do much. If I had more time to practice with her, maybe she could have gone better. She could have gotten better. But the truth is she didn't because we just had so little time. So anyways, that's that. So anyways, um, the client's mom told me to print out some exercises or past papers or whatever. And I said, sure. Um, and then I realized I can't because I can't use a printer there in the other room because my mom has to turn on the computer in order for me to use a printer and I hasn't really spoken to my mom in like two days so I can't use a printer and it's already too late so I told the client's mom hey can she bring like exercises or notebooks and whatever and we'll just you know I just can't use a printer and she's like, oh, but she's like already outside. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I'll, I'll go online. So I went online and I tried to look for past papers and exercises for Form 2 English. And um, I couldn't find any. Um, so I asked Natalie, but it was already too late. Like I was already like five minutes away from Taiwan. But I asked Natalie anyways, and Natalie's like, uh, I don't know, I either buy exercise books or I write them myself. And I'm talking about reading exercises, so Natalie writes passages herself. And I'm like, dang, okay. And then so I just went with it. And thankfully, I went to a Facebook group that throws these um, past papers and, and, and exercises out to the public. So I downloaded one and I used that one. And thankfully, it's quite similar to what she's been studying. And so we did that for one and a half hours. And for some reason, this time around, she's so much more energetic and so much more like, just haha, fuck it, whatever, kind of attitude. Maybe it's because her mom's not there. Maybe it's because she's been studying the whole day. Like she's been going through tuition after tuition uh, and working on projects with her classmates since 10 a.m. in the morning. So it's been like a hellish day. So near the end of the day, she just doesn't care. And um, after her mom left, her mom even texted me like, you know, can we only do one hour today? Because she's probably really tired. So I told her and she's like, oh no, I'm fine. I actually feel energized right now for some reason. So um, yeah, we went through a couple passages. I helped her with her reading. Her reading skills seem fine. Obviously she has no idea what half of the vocabs mean. But when it comes to answering the questions, she sort of knows how to do it. It's just the grammar and the tenses that she just gets stuck on all the time. Um, but at least I'm helping someone out. Uh, at least I'm gr or, or, uh, at least I'm gaining money, I suppose. At the end of the class, she was about to give me cash, and I'm like, hold on. I thought you pay the platform, like the app, and then the app pays me. And then I realized maybe I should have just told her to pay me in cash because that way it wouldn't get more complicated. Like if it goes to the app and then the app forgets to give it to me and I have to give out my bank card and blah, 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 blah. You know what? Just give me cash. So I, I'm going to tell her next time we meet, just give me cash. It's fine. Just let it go. But hey, at least I'm earning some money. So that's good. But that's the only thing that happened to me um, today. Nothing else. Um... Yeah, um, 
yeah thinking a lot about my art and um, my movies and i'm getting into you know i'm getting into uh, chinese history research again it's it's coming back again my obsession is coming back again um but yeah that, that's pretty much it my chest and my arms feel sore which is the perfect thing for uh, to happen and um tomorrow i'm going to work again so that's gonna be fun and then i'll go out and buy lunch maybe i'll have something simple like mcdonald's or something um yeah that's pretty much it that's pretty much it i'm gonna probably play some minecraft later or something all right time now is uh 10 12 a.m in the morning on november 6th our fifth um I slept from 5.20-ish till 10 a.m. So yesterday I thought, uh, I only watched one episode of anime, uh, which is kind of sad. But I think in return, I was pretty productive. I managed to read one chapter of manga. I even had time to draw. I drew a few faces. I drew... Leslie twice and I thought the second attempt was um, probably my best drawing of her yet um, and um, yeah yeah I'm happy I, I, I did all that shit yeah I even filmed and edited a couple reviews but after I finished drawing, it was around 4.15, and I, and actually before even, before I went, I started drawing, it was like 3.45, and at around 3.45, I thought to myself, you know what, might as well just directly go to bed, but then my dad's in the bathroom, so I decided to draw, and then after I draw, it was 4.15, my dad's still in the bathroom, and I had to wait for her, wait for him for another half an hour or something so that's fucking amazing so i ended up going to bed extremely late even though i didn't want to so that's that i had a dream about it's like film 33 again me and a bunch of people are going to make a short film but for some reason i was also um temporarily cast as one of the actors were in some sort of amusement park or uh, it felt more like a university campus, um, and, um, there was one moment where I was on a call, and I had to read a line for another character, not the main character, a side character, a very small character, and I was with my family, and my brother sitting opposite a small rectangular table, and my brother it's not the same as like my brother now it's like my brother circa 2018 he's small and young and he keeps interrupting me purposefully like blah, 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 blah. and i got so fucking mad that i stood up and i yelled at her and spat at spat at him and like screamed back and then my class of film 33 it felt like we're all from hong kong but it was just as disastrous everyone's yelling at each other and uh, no one's having fun and um, stuff like that and and yeah that's that's basically it um, I remember uh, people are like oh you haven't set checked the whatsapp group and I checked the whatsapp group and two dudes from my class are yelling at each other I think it's like Kingsley and Ernest or something or the equivalent of those two in the newer world that is but they have deleted their messages, so it says message has been del deleted, and their response is message has been deleted, and then message has been deleted, message has been deleted. So it's kind of crazy, and the whole place felt like a deserty, tropical university campus. I had to parkour around. It's almost like Minecraft. I have to secretly sneak into the language department, which is a very small building, but very well built, 
with a lot of glass and quartz and I feel like I'm in the middle of a desert but it's built in a very tropical oasis way okay but anyways that's the dream um today I'm going to work I have to wake up early because I am going to go to uh, work uh, from uh, 10 45 I'm leaving and it's gonna go all the way till like 3 I'm gonna go home and directly buy myself uh, some sort of lunch and um, yeah and then I think it's gonna go till 2 30 I'm gonna buy some sort of lunch for myself I'll just go easy I'll just buy McDonald's or something Besides, it's been a while since I've had a burger. Or, I don't know, KFC. Whatever. I think KFC is a better choice. Um, and that's it. Still no news from the rifle thing. Still no news from the producer guy. I'm really running out of luck here. I think at this point in my journey or my stay in Hong Kong, I fully... 100% accepted my fate that nothing all that interesting is going to happen to me like I 100% accepted my fate or at least 95% like I'm just not built for this place and this place is just not I'm just not destined to find anything in this place I'm not destined to find luck or love or whatever in this place um and I just gotta move on Maybe when I get to USC, things will get interesting again. But in here, it's like, there's nothing to be done. So, there is that. Um, and, uh, yeah, more acne, so that's awesome. Um, tomorrow, I think I'll go, go out for an adventure. Tomorrow night, it's actually a big... Uh, birthday dinner with dad but that means I can actually have an adventure tomorrow night and maybe I can also buy some DVDs and Blu-rays at Taiku at the CD warehouse which is my budget is 400 bucks that's it and uh, I think I can reach it actually 450 um, it's 100 bucks for two DVDs which is so damn good I'm gonna get Fallen Angel and Maynard Hong Kong I don't even, like, DVD's even so out of trend, but I, but I also don't know where else I can get this version of Fallen Angels, aside from the Blu-ray Kino Lorber, um, yeah, and then the Blu-ray, I'm gonna get Drifting and Fat Choice Spirit, I swear to God if it's already taken, I'm gonna be so pissed. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Please, rifle thing, answer me. Please, producer guy, answer me. Please let me have some sort of hope, some sort of leading line to something, some people, someone, please. God damn, this place is like a desert. It's so dry. <sighs> All right, time now is 11.26 p.m., um, the day closes, nothing that crazy happened today, I went to work, I was very sleep deprived, I slept less than 5 hours, and yeah, it's not the end of the world, not at all, but, I don't know, just because I, I had, I have had such great sleeps in the last few weeks that when I suddenly have sleeps less than 5 hours, it really strike hard. So, I just had a terrible mood this morning. I just wasn't in the mood to do anything. My mom was on a FaceTime call with grandma, and norm normally I'm happy to see my grandma, but I'm just, I just cannot physically speak to anyone. I just can't. So, I arrived at work, and I arrived pretty much right on time. Um, I thought I was going to be late. Thank God I was right on time. I, I just kept thinking about how... Um, boring and empty I am. Coming back to Hong Kong made me realize how empty I really am. Because, okay, I'm going to talk more about that a little later, but I'm fucking empty. I'm bored. I have nothing to do in life. 
And I thought to myself, well, the only interesting that thing that could possibly happen would be to run into um, the producer guy. The, not the producer guy for the Fruit Chan shoot, but the producer guy who helped me produce the Dreams of an Empty Street. Um, the guy who works for my mom and um, is a little bit successful in the Hong Kong film industry now. And when I was thinking that, I was entering the building... And when I entered the building, I immediately saw that guy. So it was like prophecy came true one second later. And I saw him and his son. And I'm like, hi. At first he didn't hear me. And I said, hi. And then I yelled out his name. And then he turned around. He's like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, I'm here to film stuff. And he's like, okay. And then he told me that he actually, he asked me, when am I leaving? And I said, mid-December. And he said, oh. Because there's actually a feature film shoot in January. I was going to ask you to like maybe join out or just watch. Observe. But you're leaving. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, it's fine anyways. It's It doesn't matter anyways. It's better to develop there. It's better to develop your film career in the US than in Hong Kong. You have nothing to do here anyways. And he's like, oh, it's going to be fine. And I, and I told him, but I want to meet people. I just thought the connections would be helpful. And he's like, nah, maybe after you come back. But make connections there. And that's true. Literally every single person I've met told me doing film stuff in the USA is better. That's true. That's a true fact. But that doesn't mean I don't want to make connections in Hong Kong. That is also very important. In fact, that is one of the biggest reasons for me to come back this time around in 2023. Um, and again, by connections, I don't mean just go to a film set and just look at people. I want to join groups. I want to find like-minded people. And doing that shit is really rare. Like, we have one of the biggest forums, one of the biggest internet forums... Uh, in Hong Kong called LIHKG and people there barely talk about movies we go to Facebook groups and it's nothing it's all crew uh, acting for actors for hire Facebook posts I checked those Facebook posts again today this morning nothing there's nothing out there so yeah I don't know it, it seems really really tough to find connections here Finding like-minded people here is extremely tough. And, you know, I'm thinking at least the least I can do before I leave is to find someone around my age who is interested in being DP or PD so that when I go go to LA, come back, I can immediately find a PD and DP. Like, immediately, because we're friends already. Instead of going around and asking people for help. At least a PD... I don't know, DP, if I want, if I do become like a very successful director, I want to have one DP who just follows me for the rest of my life. And that's it. Like we're the team, we're the combo. And right now I can sort of sense that Cliff may be it, but I don't want to be too sure because Cliff is also working on his own stuff. But if Cliff's work with me, uh, with the next short film worked out really well maybe cliff would have want to would want to be my dp more like i just want a dp that will stick with me for the rest of my career and just dp for every film i have because they will know my language they will know my language they'll know my framing and composition they'll, they'll know my movements anyways the classes two classes a bunch of four to six year old children um, learning music, singing, playing games, activities. It went on and on and on and on and on. It went way longer than it felt like. The first time I went there, it didn't feel that long. But today it felt really long. Maybe it's because I'm just really tired. It just felt extremely long. And by the end, I felt really hungry. I spaced out many times. After the shoot, I immediately left. I ate a chocolate, took MTR back home, and it was already like 4 p.m. and I haven't even had lunch. You know, classic. Back in LA, that shit happens all the time. And here it's an anomaly. So I went to KFC. 
and I wanted to buy a simple meal. So I bought a simple combo meal, four chicken wings, simple mushroom rice, um, Pepsi, can of Pepsi, right, can of Pepsi, uh, plus an extra egg tart. So I came back. So earlier this morning, my mom cooked me two um, eggs, fried eggs, and butter toast, which is good breakfast. But the thing is, I can't eat eggs in the morning. <laughs> Eggs and milk in the morning is a no-no for me. In the afternoon, at night, it's fun. In the morning, no. If I have to eat eggs in the morning, it would have to be completely cooked. I can't stand egg yolks, raw egg yolks, in the morning. Very specifically. And it's even worse if I have less sleep than normal. And my mom probably thought that it's just like a personal preference thing. Like I don't like runny egg yolks completely in general, but no, I have like a stand ability, but it's like a, but it's like a, like a bad stand ability, like a negative stand ability that very specifically says that if I have, if I wake up by an alarm and didn't have a good night's sleep and in the morning I eat a raw egg yolk, I'm going to have a stomach ache. That's exactly what happened. I had like three seconds of stomach ache. One hour after I had that breakfast. So I, I had that breakfast at around 10.50 a.m. At 11.50 a.m. I had three seconds of stomach ache. And then for the rest of the day, I never had any stomach ache. But my stomach kept rumbling. Um, so that's that. Um, but yeah, I had KFC and there's no vegetables. So my mom also cooked me some vegetables. And then they all left. And then a little later... At around 8 p.m., my dad woke up, and my dad went out to buy Vietnamese food for our dinner. And I told my dad, we don't need to buy that much stuff. But you know my dad. He bought to loads of shit. $420. And um, thankfully, we finished most of it, and some of it can be used for tomorrow. See, staying in L.A. and surviving in L.A. made me really good at saving shit. So whenever I can't finish something, I pack it up. And I save it for tomorrow or I save it for another day because I need to equally distribute the food so that I'm not wasting any. If I'm full, that's it. Done. I don't need to eat any more. I will save it for tomorrow. The restaurant gave us eating utensils. We're not using them. We're saving them. In reality, you know, we can use it. In Hong Kong, I can waste resources way better. But in LA, I tend to keep them. Even though I rarely even use them but i tend to keep them keep these restaurant eating utensils because may, i don't know maybe one day it'll it'll be helpful in la i survive in la i don't live i survive every drop of water every bit of food a little bit of chocolate here a bit of leftover potato chips there a little bit of sleep here a little bit of happiness there just i i just suck every resources dry because i have so little of them I'm just, I'm like a small fern between two bricks, in, in, in the gaps between two bricks. Just, I'm sucking up as much resource as possible. That's my life in LA, you know? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, also, um, I just... Another thing is, um, if they cancel me again, if HKTA tutoring cancels on me again, um, next Tuesday, I will 100% quit. Normally, a patient man would have quit earlier. I am very patient. Um, but if they cancel on me again, I'll just straight up quit. And I'll find another tutoring opportunity on HKTA or STAPS or whatever, because at least they'll be more consistent, you know. Yeah, and nothing else. I just feel very empty. Going back to Hong Kong made me realize how empty I am. Because when I went to the USA, first of all, round one, I was also very empty. But also because I was surviving, I was a young plant, young and green. But starting from round two to round three, my entire personality is literally based around film 32 and 33. 
And so when Film 33 ended, I am nothing. I have no romantic relationship outside. I have no friends outside of my college. Not a lot, anyways. I have no hobbies outside of watching movies and filmmaking. I have no other source of happiness other than, you know, Film 33 related. So once Film 33 was over, I am actually completely over. And it's even more the case when I'm here in Hong Kong, when I've, oh, I have friends here, but they're not the kind of friends that you constantly reach out to because you need them and they need you. It's not, you just see them, you eat a dinner and then you disappear. I don't have romantic relationships here. I don't have other hobbies here other than playing Minecraft and watching more movies and they don't even mean anything. I am actually really empty. I have no real, like aside from filmmaking, I have no purpose in life. I have no, a single other purpose in life. Nada. I go down and work out, but I work out only because I hate how I look and I don't want to look like a skeleton so that people will treat me better and with more respect when I arrive at USC. So it's not for anything else other than for others to see. You know, I, I want to earn money, but that's only so that I would feel better about the USC tuition. It's also about USC. It's never about here in Hong Kong. I am actually empty here. I actually have no purpose here at all. I'm not going to find some interesting person and form a deep bond with them or anything it's impossible it's just nothing but dead ends i keep trying 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 and, it, and i keep hitting dead ends maybe it's because i'm just not active enough but i just can't find anyone interesting i can't find anything interesting to do here even visiting the fruit chan set which i thought would open lots of doors for me didn't go anywhere I thought the film workshop thing would open a lot of doors for me. Didn't go anywhere. So, and that's like the two only things that I can bank on. Maybe tuition, maybe tutoring could lead me somewhere, make me make more friends. No. No, no, no. I feel nothing. Maybe seeing Natalie and Cedric again will make me feel something. Maybe we'll have something to talk about. No. I saw Cedric for 20 fucking minutes. We barely said anything. We ate some food. And God knows when I'll speak to him ever again. God knows. And I know he doesn't care. And I know nobody cares. Because everything's pointless here. Everything's pointless for me. It felt nice. The first couple of weeks I, I arrived here, it's fucking nice. Because I finally get to relax from the disgusting desert that is LA where I have to suck every resource dry because I'm surviving every single goddamn minute. So living here is awesome. I got a bed, I got food. I can like live. I don't survive here, I live like a normal human being. But the thing is at the same time, it's pointless. So would you rather survive in the desert and suffer with purpose or live nicely, purposeless? Neither. They both suck. That's exactly the analogy between my life here in Hong Kong and my life there. That is the analogy, guys. That is the analogy. Wherever I go, it's bad. And here, I am hopeless. And there, I suffer. And there is no in between. Um. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've said it this morning, I'll say it again. I've given up on trying to find anything interesting to do or find anyone interesting. I have about one month and two weeks left here, which is nice. But, um, I expect nothing to happen, first of all. I expect zilch. Um, because I've given up. I'm not... I even went fucking Halloween with Zara. And that 
that was just okay. That was like a mediocre experience. Not mediocre. Mediocre would be a little harsh. That was a little bit underwhelming. That was just okay. Like, you know, the four Hong Kong the four Hong Kongers incident is really interesting. That one was even bigger for me of an event than the Halloween thing. I don't know why. I think it's because there's more of an emotional quality to the four Hong Kongers event. Um Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing here really interests me. I don't emotionally connect to anything here. Everything's bland. Which is good for a couple weeks, but Oh well, time for more Minecraft, I guess.